one in four seniors suffer from sarcopenia, which is an age-related loss of muscle mass and function. With a rapidly aging population in Singapore, sarcopenia rates are expected to increase. Hello, I'm Dr. Tang Yap Chuan from Sing Health Polyclinics. My team and I are studying sarcopenia in our seniors and we are finding ways to slow it down. First, let's understand what sarcopenia is and how the muscle functions. Imagine this is a muscle. In the early stages of life, muscles grow and develop. In the adult life, it maintains and later in life when the natural process of aging sets in and muscle tissue ages, people start to lose muscle mass and function. These are the first signs of age-related sarcopenia. Factors such as decline in activity, chronic illness and poor nutrition can also contribute to sarcopenia. Such muscle loss can result in reduced mobility, increased risk of falls, slower recovery from illness, frailty and even death. It also lowers one's quality of life due to loss of independence, limitations in movement and even leads to social isolation. My team and I are conducting a cross-sectional study of close to 700 volunteers aged 60 years and above at Sting Health Polyclinics Passeries. Our senior volunteers are assessed with three tests. First, hand grip strength. The measurement of hand grip strength assesses frailty and the loss of muscle mass and strength. Lower hand grip strength values have been shown to be a consistent predictor of future adverse health outcomes, including disability and death. Secondly, gait. This is an important indicator of functional ability. Gait speed is measured by manually measuring the time the volunteer takes to walk a distance of 6 meters. A volunteer with no sarcopenia present would walk faster than 0.8 meters per second. Lastly, we test muscle mass using a bioelectrical impedance analysis scale. A very low and safe electrical signal is sent. The signal analyzes the body and gives an indication of muscle mass. We then follow a sarcopenia diagnostic criteria for Asians to determine who has sarcopenia and categorize volunteers into different stages such as pre-sarcopenia, sarcopenia and severe sarcopenia. With this as a baseline, we track the volunteers over one year to see the progression of sarcopenia. We then repeat the test to check if the volunteers maintain their hand grip power, walk speed and muscle mass. Proper nutrition and active lifestyle may stop sarcopenia progression or even better, reverse the loss of muscle. So we advise our patients to continue with it. We hope that from this study, we can develop a program that will allow our seniors to maintain their muscle mass, strength and function. We aim to reduce the burden of sarcopenia in our ageing population.